I would like to introduce you to Sophia. In October of 2017, Sophia became a citizen of Saudi Arabia. Four weeks later, she addressed the United Nations and was given the title Innovation Champion for the UN. Sophia is a self-proclaimed advocate for women, and when the timing's right, she'd like to adopt a child. Sophia is also a humanoid robot. Artificial intelligence, combined with cameras in her eyes, allows her to track you as you walk across the room. She can maintain eye contact during conversations, and she will recognize you the second time you speak. A natural language subprocessing system allows Sophia to engage in normal seeming conversation, and she can mimic 60 human expressions so that we feel more comfortable in our interactions. So I'd like to ask you, how do you feel about Sophia? Are you excited about the incredible innovation that we have created? Or do you feel a little bit threatened because maybe Sophia is becoming too human-like? When I first saw Sophia being interviewed, I definitely felt a combination of these two emotions. But as a neuroscientist building a company in AI and machine learning, I can tell you that the algorithms that drive Sophia are nothing compared to the AI that's going to impact every aspect of our lives in the next decade. So what I would like to do is to get you excited about some of this incredible innovation and to raise some real concerns about what the future looks like for us. Currently, billions of dollars are being spent on the development of ASI, or artificial superintelligence, which revolves around the idea that computers will reach our level of human cognition. But because they don't share the same biological and chemical constraints that our brains do, experts predict that once they reach our level of human cognition, they will surpass us very quickly. But this technical, technological race for advancement is nothing new, although it has increased in the past 10 years. This acceleration has been called the fourth industrial revolution. It has seen a new rise of machine learning, incredible advancements in cryptocurrency, the Internet of Things, augmented and virtual reality and blockchain. It has been a whirlwind of innovation, and it has brought us to the cusp of the fifth industrial revolution, where the line between human and computer starts to disappear, where we, as a human race, learn how to dance with the innovation that we've created. But the question is, do we trust AI to be our dance partner in the coming years? Although it's really cool, a lot of us have a healthy uneasiness about the role that AI will play in the coming years. A lot of this is fueled by media and movies that depict super-powered AI robots seeking world domination. This might be entertaining to watch on a Friday night, but it's the more subtle shifts in power that should leave us feeling uncomfortable. Some of you may remember the movie Gattaca from 1997. It's based on the idea that AI-empowered computers become the gatekeeper to the American dream. They use blood samples to categorize humans into genetically inferior or invalid humans and genetically superior or valid humans who are given the keys to power and authority within our society. This may seem like a far-fetched future, but experts are clear that we as a society are at a fork in the road and the, the technology that we're currently building and the way that we implement it in our society will totally threaten or ultimately enhance our experience as humans on Earth. Either way, this innovation will shape who we can become, what we can achieve as a society, and how we interact with one another and the world around us. Some of you are sitting here thinking this is kind of a cool conversation, but maybe something we should talk about in a few years, once our technology has had a chance to mature. But I can tell you, in healthcare, we're already late to the dance. Recent developments in machine learning, cloud computing, and wearables are creating a complete transformation of our healthcare system. Experts predict that within our children's lifetime, 80% of what your family doctor does today will be replaced by AI. I say this with some caution because I'm married to a physician, <laughs> but the fact is that in a very short amount of time, 
a lot of your healthcare needs will be met by someone who looks like this. Now, Sophia is not your doctor today, but as I mentioned, the incredible advancements in AI are changing the trajectory of our healthcare system. And these innovations are advancing so fast that we're entering a gray space where we don't really understand the definitions of helpful and harmful. So what I would like to do tonight is to take you through some of the examples that I live with in a daily, in a daily, in my field of expertise, which is human augmentation. AI-driven in innovation is changing the field of human augmentation. Bodies are being restored and minds are being improved in ways that are unheard of. For example, the bionic eye brain implant is partially restoring vision to those who have not been able to see for years. The way this technology works is electrodes are actually implanted underneath the skull on the surface of the brain. And with lots of training, people can actually start to recognize objects through their bionic eyes. In a similar vein, individuals who have a prosthetic limb can now feel sensation through that limb and can control the fine motor movement so precisely that they can pick up a piece of Lego or crack an egg into a frying pan. At the other end of this spectrum, we have exoskeletons that are already being used to increase strength and endurance in construction workers. But of course, research has taken it to the next level. And brain implants and artificial intelligence are being combined to allow these to allow individuals to control exoskeletons with the power of their brain. The case study that I'm following is an individual who's had a spinal cord injury, and with a lot of training, he's been able to control the exoskeleton like we control our muscles. He can stand, he can take steps. If he thinks, raise my left arm, his left arm raises. It's wild. We are, at, we are entering into a new world. It's exciting, but we have to remember that a lot of these technologies are actually being driven by closed-loop computer systems, where AI is enhancing our human experience without our human input. And so all of, all of a sudden, technology that was designed to reestablish human agency is actually taking a lot of control away from these patients. In another example, deep brain stimulation is being used to improve cognitive and behavior in patients with Parkinson's disease. This has been going on for decades in clinics and hospitals, but with the advancements in technology, 200,000 people have signed up for a trial where deep brain stimulation has been implanted in their brain and they go home with it. It's being tested with Alzheimer's patients to improve memory. Again, this is an incredible technology being applied to a really important area. But if our regulatory system doesn't help us navigate the commercialization of tools like this, we end up in a society that looks a little bit more like Gattaca, where we have those who can afford the technology, whether it's an individual or a country, becoming augmented or valid humans, and those who can't afford the technology becoming invalid humans, or humans who are not augmented, thereby increasing the divide between the rich and the poor. <clears throat> On top of this, our regulatory system can't keep up with how fast we're innovating. It's a good problem to have, but how do we trust AI-driven innovation to take care of our health and the health of our children in the future? Well, experts across the globe are creating theoretical frameworks to develop human-centered AI. Research is showing that you can actually value load AI to bring it in alignment to, into alignment with, your, with our human values and morals. In addition to this, checks are being put in place that encourage humans to be involved in the decision-making process, even in areas like disease diagnosis, where AI already shows the potential to outperform humans. Physicians are included as the final decision-maker. As innovators, we are striving to make our future safer as well. We're creating transparent algorithms that you and your physician can understand and implement easily into your daily life to improve your healthcare. We're testing the al these algorithms 
rigorously on patient populations, as opposed to on generated data, like many other AI-driven fields can do. And we're working closely with regulatory bodies to ensure that your data is safe, and that we're translating the data to your physician in appropriate ways. Finally, large med tech companies and feisty startups like mine are relying on an agile approach to product design, where we're seeking feedback from the users and providing opportunities for you to actually get involved in the development process. If you snoop around a little bit, you'll find opportunities to lend your voice and your data to the future of AI in healthcare. So if you're concerned about mental health or Alzheimer's disease, you can go online today and start donating your healthy brain data to advance this field of AI. Finally, as an innovator and a business owner, one of the most important pieces in this puzzle is you, the healthcare consumer. Without you, there's no reason to bring our innovation out of the lab and into the market. Without you, there's no market. So while experts postulate, it's your consumer dollars that are going to speak most loudly in which technologies thrive and which technologies just don't make the cut. Your your acceptance or your rejection of our data privacy policies will dictate how we handle your data. So I encourage you to read your user license agreements. And if you're not comfortable with it, let the companies know. You wouldn't donate your blood if you thought there was a risk that your genetic information would be shared with an insurance company. In the same way, you need to take ownership of your health data and know where it's going and how it's going to be used. Finally, your inclusion or exclusion of your physician in this process is going to dictate how the medical field sees these evolving technologies. So I encourage you to involve your doctor in the process. If you're going to choose an application to guide your health, let them know. Overall, the impact of AI-driven innovation in our healthcare system is massive, and it's already starting. If we can get this right, we can democratize the healthcare process across the globe. Earlier this week, I was on a panel of women in data, and I sat up there and looked out um, at 250 women who are applying data science in incredible ways. And this is part of the fifth industrial revolution, is reclaiming our use of technology to advance our society for good. These women were using data to improve maternal health care in Africa. There is incredible technology that's been developed to identify diabetes early in rural populations in India. But if we get healthcare, AI-driven healthcare, wrong, we risk losing some of what it means to be human along the way. So I encourage you to get curious about how AI-driven innovation can and will impact your future healthcare, and lend your voice and your data so that we can choreograph this human-computer dance together. Woo!